Hello, I'm Jeremy Bagulius, professor of double bass and music technology at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. I'm presenting today a little tutorial on the NMEA, the 2018 NMEA All-State Audition Repertoire for double bass. This video focuses in on the scales. So a few general, general comments about scales. I did um, adjudicate NMEA All-State Auditions for double bass a long time ago, uh, for several years. One of the things I noticed was that uh, a lot of the candidates could play the etude really well, the excerpts really well, but just about everybody had problems with the scales. So if you want to differentiate yourself from the other people, really work on your scales. It will uh, make you stand out. Also, scales will make you a better player. I know that scales are not flashy, no one's impressed when you can play a scale perfectly, but it does make you a better player. So trust your teachers when they say that. It really does help with uh, your playing. So in the performance of scales, what the audition committee is looking for when you perform them, um, three things in general. One, can you play the right notes? Look at the key signatures and can you play the right notes? Two, can you play those notes in tune? Bass, it's an unusually difficult instrument to play in tune, so um, it is the one thing that they listen for. Very hard to play in tune, but we still have to strive to uh, have as perfect intonation as possible. But just so you know, I'm still working on it. We're all still working on it. Even the top level professionals have to play scales every day, so you should too. Uh, the third thing you need to think about is consistency. Consistency is a theme that uh, you should think about when you work on scales. Consistency in attack. Are your attacks all the same on each note? Is the sustain of each of your quarter notes, does it sound exactly the same? Is the release the same? Are the dynamics consistent the same throughout the entire scale? Um, is your tone consistent? Uh, is there a scratch, is there a squeak, or is it pure sound from beginning to end of the sound for all of the notes? Again, it's about consistency. Consistency of tone, consistency of pulse, keeping the same tempo, consistency of attack, consistency of release, consistency of the uh, sustain of the note. Put all those things together and you have a formidable challenge. A few other things before I get into the nitty gritty of these scales. I know that your uh, parts are marked quarter note equals 120. You don't have to play it that fast. You can play it at 80. In fact, I've seen in the manual for string auditions that the scales are played at 80 beats per minute. So I guess it's really not, not all that important. Aim for somewhere between 80 and 120. And trust me on that. When I used to listen to them, I didn't sit there and measure on my doctor beat if you were playing it at 120. I wanted to hear those other things. Right notes, intonation, consistency. If you did it at 80 beats per minute, great. If you did it at 120, great. But those other three things, consistency, intonation, and correct notes were more important. Today I'll play it a little bit on the fast side just to get through more material in less amount of time. And one last comment for all of these, don't use vibrato on the quarters. If you're not using an open string on the whole note, use your vibrato. That's the place to show it off. And make sure that you play all four beats of the whole note. Okay. First scale on your bass major scales is the E major. So you're going to have to dip back for the G sharps and the D sharps. So make sure that you dip back for it. I pivot, you can shift. That'll allow you to get the D sharp for that one note outside of first position. Another neat thing about the E major scale is that, uh, you put your thumb here, your high E is easily found on fourth finger. So if you think of just jamming your thumb all the way up to the neck block where it stops, put your fourth finger down, you have your E natural. It's a very easy note to find. So E major is actually a very friendly scale, so let me play it now.
next scale is F major. Nothing too uh, out of the ordinary here. Oh, by the way, you should be using my um, PDFs that has all of my position markings and my fingerings. It'll make it a lot easier for you to follow along. And yes, I am using the Samandal position names. If you want the Raboth position names, I can easily uh, make those out for you as well. The reason that I use Samandal, uh, you know, I, I don't make really a distinction of what is better than the other, but in terms of uh, exactness, in terms of communicating um, where you should put your uh, finger, I find that the Samandal positions are much easier to uh, be precise, even though it's way too much information. I mean, those stacked Roman numerals, I mean, who really cares? But in terms of just telling you where to put your finger in this academic setting, it's perfectly fine. Okay, uh, back to the F major before I was about to go on a tangent. Um, again, nothing really too fancy. Let me just play it. F major. shouldn't. The uh, high notes of high E natural and F sharp, there's another landmark you can use to find that F sharp. High F sharp. This part of your hand, on most bases, you just shove it all the way up, let it land against the edge of the base, Put your, reach your F sharp as far as you can. For most bases and most hands, you'll find your F sharp. And then E natural is really easy to find on first finger as well. So that's the trick to finding E natural and F sharp in that intermediate position between fifth and sixth. And the high G is really easy, just use harmonic. Okay, let me play it really quick. Some kids have a G sharp block. Make sure you play your G sharps. The high A and G sharp, that's in primary thumb position. So um, if you're not used to playing in thumb position, before you get to the G sharp, you're going to be playing the E and F sharp, which again is pretty easy to find. Jam that edge of your hand up against the base. Then you'll have to pull your thumb out. Make sure you pull the thumb out. Shift to the G sharp. Then A. So if you're not using, used to thumb position, one of the things you'll have to remember is to pulling the thumb out before you shift to thumb position. Okay. Let me play it real quick. on your NMEA uh, major scales sheet. It's pretty easy. It's all in half position. Really nothing to say here. You lucked out. And I've never ever heard it asked. But here it is anyway. Here it is again. Again, you lucked out. You don't have to go up high and you don't have to use an extension. The only thing you have to worry about is shifting up the third position. And for most high school kids, that's pretty standard. So uh, just to try to make the connection between the E and the low F sharp. That can sometimes be a jarring connection. So you don't need to make it any more jarring by uh, uh, not playing it well. So it's, it's awkward, but just try to play it. So here's D major. Scales, and these are tough. 
And uh, you should have the ones that were arranged by Bill Ritchie. And um, you will really definitely need my PDF so uh, to follow along. Well, where to begin? You're going to have to go into thumb position on the C sharp minor. So, um, and land on a G sharp. I think that, uh, you know what? I'm going to save this for another video. These are really tough. And I need to think about how to communicate, uh, how to play them. So, please look for another video on bass melodic minor scales for the NMEA.